And light travels faster than sound So I look real bright Till I open my mouth I tip around What's up, my wizards? It's Dev from SBMTG down there, and I know I just wore the Batman shirt, but I seem to have misplaced like 70% of my shirt collection. Seriously, I don't know where my shirts are. But who gives a shirt about that? I've got a deck tech for you. The very last deck tech that I'm going to do that includes Dragons of Tarkir and Magic Origins. More on that later. Hello, Igby. Today we're going to do something I've been psyched to do since Eldritch Moon came out. This is Harmless Pack, the red-black Harmless Pack deck that uses Harmless Offering and Demonic Packs in case you've been living under a rock since Eldritch Moon came out. This is a combo. Now a couple videos ago I asked you to tell me in the comments what you wanted to see more. Just the straight up red black harmless pack control deck. Sometimes adds a blue for Grixis, sometimes add white for the Mardus. Um, or if you just wanted to see the really really stupid thing that's just like harmless offering demonic pack, Triskaidekaphobia, Tree of Perdition, and all this junk, Gold Knight Castigator, you know. And um, definitely that one won. The super goofy, ridiculous, janky version of the deck is what everyone apparently wants to see. So I have thrown a bunch of stuff stuff into this deck and it actually works a little bit better than I thought it might so let's give it a shot let's take a look at this stupid thing I want to start things off we got to play a four of harmless offering and a four of demonic pact people have been saying like well even since before harmless um, offering was printed you know people saw demonic pact and they were like well if we get like a new donate this could actually work and they decided with like three months left in the format to give us a new donate and it kind of does work it turns out in case again you haven't somehow haven't seen the combo just use every option on demonic pact and because of the way demonic packs worded you can just basically give it to your opponent with a harmless offering and they will have to choose the option that loses them the game simple easy and actually does in fact work if you can control the board in the game long enough to get this off now most pack decks will just play three harmless offering because all you're donating is demonic pack and you want to free up as many slots as possible but in this deck we're donating more stuff because we're getting really goofy um, than just demonic packs so i'm going to play the full play set of offering now among the stuff that we're donating to them other than back. All your suggestions here. And again, they, I've crammed a bunch of stuff in here, but they, they, it works better than I imagined it would to begin with. Um, we're going to play two copies of Triskaidekaphobia and then one copy of Tree of Perdition to back it up. Now, these cards work uh, together in a very obvious way. You know, tap the tree, put them at 13, they die to Triskaidekaphobia. Simple as that. But why play it in an offering deck? Well, in this deck, we can surprise them by giving them the Triskaidekaphobia during our turn, and then when they go, if they're at 13, they just die. Now, a lot of people are saying Triskaidekaphobia is terrible because pain lands exist. Maybe it'll be better when pain lands aren't around anymore. I actually will say that, first of all, they're not guaranteed to have a pain land out. Let's just get that out of the way. And that there are some decks, monocolored decks, that don't use pain lands in the format. Some, especially at FNMs and stuff, where you don't see all the top tier decks. So you won't always have to run into pain lands, but if you do, let's just say you do, theoretically, Theoretically, then um, they tap a pain land so as not to die during their upkeep at Triskaidekaphobia. Now what you've done is you've tapped down one of their lands for an entire turn cycle. They can't use it for the rest of their turn or your turn. And you've dealt a damage to them. Really, neither of those things can be said to be bad. And to finish off the things we want to donate list here, we're going to do two copies of Gold Knight Castigator in the deck. A lot of people have also said this, you know, just donate Gold Knight to them and then burn them out for the win. That actually has worked a couple of times. I was really, really suspicious of this. But there, you know what you do is you play your Gold Knight Castigator and you swing with it right when it comes into play. That's four damage. And then next turn, you'll donate it to them and you still should have some mana open to say Incendiary Flow then for six. In this scenario, you've dealt 10 damage. That's half their life total in just a couple of turns and for really very, very little mana overall. So, and Gold Knight Castigator is also versatile in that sometimes you'll donate it to them, sure, burn them out for the win. We're playing a bunch of different burn spells in the deck. It can happen that way, but sometimes you'll just play Gold Knight Castigator and start beating their face in. The last thing I'll say here before I finish is that this little suite of cards that we can donate is actually really, really versatile. Demonic Pack gives us a lot of value over the course of a couple of turns. Triskaidekaphobia does a couple of different things, and Gold Knight Castigator can either be, you know, burn you to death or swing over and kill you in a couple of turns. So this suite of cards we donate is actually pretty good. But to make this plan work, we have to play a bunch of removal. We basically have to control the board as much as possible for the first few turns because we're playing a ton of four drops in the deck. That's the one like serious weakness. There's more than a couple of weaknesses, but one of the glaring, just as a deck builder looking at the deck, 
Um, one of the glaring problems is that there are a ton of four drops and a couple of five drops, you know, things that we want to pay five mana for that aren't necessarily five drops. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But we're using a lot of mana to do the stuff that we really want to do to win the game in the deck. So we've got to have some low wind to control the board so we don't just get run over. That's, we've got to do it. So with that in mind, we're going to play 15 different removal spells, not counting, by the way, the Demonic Pack, which can kill creatures. So we're getting close to 20 removal spells in the deck. That's kind of crazy. So let's talk about all those. We're going to play some Burn, four copies of Incendiary Flow, and four copies of Collective Defiance. And Collective Defiance is one of those things that you might want to pay five mana for, but doesn't cost five mana. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, but Incendiary Flow, super important for the early game, got to have some action on turn two, and got to control the board. It's also very good burn that can either put us within reach of winning the game, or with Gold Knight Castigator donated to them, can deal up to six damage. And there are times where you're like, okay, donate Gold Knight Castigator to you, um, Incendiary Flow, Incendiary Flow, deal 12 to you, like, it's, it's kind of crazy. And Collective Defiance just kind of does it all, you know, we can either hit them to the face, kill one of their guys, discard our hand and draw some more, you know, just a lot of really good options on this thing and is a burn spell to work better with Gold Knight Castigator. So, really like a lot about Collective Defiance, and a lot of people are waking up to how good this card is in multiple decks right now. It's not like it's the number one card in Standard, but people are starting to say, like, wait a minute, Collective Defiance is awesome. We're going to play a 4 of Grasp of Darkness. Again, we've got to play a bunch of early game stuff that controls the board, so... Grasp of Darkness. I really don't... I no longer have any more words for this card. Just, it's one of the best removal pieces in the format by a lot, and a lot of creatures are sort of judged by whether or not they can survive a Grasp of Darkness relative to their converted mana cost. So, just keep that in mind, because Grasp is going to be a 4 of in a lot of decks that play black, and that's no exception here. We're going to play just a 1 of Ruinous Path in the main deck. We have other ways of killing Planeswalkers, but it is just nice to have a 3 mana option. It's like, kill that guy, kill that Planeswalker, get out of here, awaken it sometimes. It's not a bad option either. So I at least want to pack the 1 of Ruinous Path in the main. And I'll finish off these removal pieces in the main deck by talking about our two of Languish. Now we're playing a bunch of four drops, I may have already mentioned that a couple times. Um, we're playing a bunch of, of, of expensive cards in the deck starting at four, so we don't want to run too many Languishes because that'll just add to the amount of cards we have to play that cost four mana. Um, and I want to fit all this kooky stuff in the deck so I can cut down on the Languishes, especially considering all of this removal that we're playing. Whether it's spot removal or not, it still gets creatures off the board. So I kind of don't want to draw too many Languishes depending on what we're playing against. I think two is just fine and is enough to where we'll draw into it in the mid to late game a lot of the time when we need it. Here are some other spells. That's how I've got it labeled in my notebook. Other spells that we're playing. I'm just going to play a three of Read the Bones here. Um, just really, really good card draw piece. I mean, I, again, I can't say much about it other than that. We've got to get sort of a refill towards the mid to late game here. It's nice to have some card advantage. And Read the Bones is one of the better pieces of that. Actually, sort of in the whole format right now. So all I can say is play Read the Bones. I want to slip in one Transgress the Mind here in the main deck. I'd like to play a bunch of them in the sideboard, which we have actually, we filled out a playset in the sideboard. Um, but I at least want to play one in the main deck to have that option when we do get it. The Transgress of the Mind is very good against a lot of decks in the format, I just don't know how to fit it in without sort of compromising the stupid stuff that I'm trying to do in the deck. So, you know, if you want to cut Triskaidekaphobia and Tree of Perdition, I think that Transgress may be one of the first additions um, that you make to the deck. And to finish off these spells, just a one-up Dark Petition in the main deck. We've got a lot of stuff we're trying to find, you know, if we have uh, half of the combo, Harmless Pat, uh, harmless Offering, or Demonic Pat, we have to go find the other half of the combo sometimes. And this can be really good if we're doing exactly that. So, I want to at least play one thing that tutors stuff, because we've got a lot of stuff that we may want to tutor for. But wait, the deck's not quite done yet. Last thing I'll talk about in the main deck is a 3-up copy of Goblin Dark Dwellers. Nearly every single card next to Languish, that's a spell in this deck, um, and Dark Petition, will work with Goblin Dark Dwellers, and they're all very nice to recast. And do remember that if you recast a Collective Defiance with the Goblin Dark Dwellers, you can choose to escalate it. That is really good and really important sometimes in the late game. Um, and it's just good at recasting, you know, Ruinous Path, Incendiary Flow, Transgress the Mind, um, and all this stuff. Read the Bones is a good card to recast, Grasp of Darkness. So, really, really like Goblin Dark Dwellers in this deck, because they're playing a bunch of stuff. By the way, not to mention Harmless Offering can be recast with this. So we're playing a bunch of stuff that it's really good with, and it's a nice, big, meaty body with Menace, which we kind of need more of in the deck, so we can have some more traditional sort of win conditions. 24 lands in the deck, and it's, it's pretty cut and dried, honestly. You know, you play all the red-black, um, you know, lands, all the red-black dual lands. You play some Evolving Wilds, throw some Mountains and Swamps in there, and you call it a day. It's really not too hard. 
And here's our sideboard right here, which we're playing a lot of three and four ofs, if you haven't noticed. Here we've got a couple of one ofs in Ruinous Path and Sinister Concoction. And by the way, Sinister Concoction I think is good right now because of Emrakul. It can destroy Emrakul at instant speed without itself being an instant, you know. Either that or it can hold them off of playing Emrakul if it's already on the battlefield. They don't, they don't want you to pay one mana to kill their Emrakul. So I think Sinister Concoction is actually an interesting piece of tech right now, and I'm, there's probably better pieces. But as far as stuff that can kill Emrakul the turn that it is played, I like Concoction a lot. Aside from that, Duress could be in the main deck, same thing with Fiery Impulse. It all depends on if you want to take out some of the goofier stuff that we're doing, like Castigator, Triskaidekaphobia, you know. Because this deck can be a fairly serious deck, and it has top aided a couple of times with very similar lists that just don't play the doofy stuff, you know. Cut the Triskaidekaphobia, cut the tree, cut the Gold Knight Castigators, and play more Duress, more Transgress main deck. And you've got something that can do fairly well at a high level tournament, or at least from what we've seen so far. Here's your power rankings for the deck. A final score of 60, which isn't as bad as it looks, because we're bad in some stats that we don't really care about, you know. We're not playing a bunch of powerful pieces, the so power goes down. We're not a speedy deck, so speed goes down. We don't have a ton of powerful offense, so offense goes down, but the stats that we care about, namely synergy and defense, are pretty high in the deck and are the keys to the deck, too. You know, basically, we don't care that we're not fast, we don't care that we're not that powerful, we just want to control the game in the early game first three to five turns and to start dropping these combo pieces that we can win off of the back of. That's all I've got for now, but I do want to touch on a couple of things we're doing in the coming weeks while I still have your ear here at the end of the video. Um, first of all, you may have heard me say that I would talk about this later on in the video, but you may have heard me say that um, this is the last deck that I'm doing with Dragons of Tarkir or Magic Origins. I asked a, a couple of videos ago what I should do in terms of that, and almost unanimously people said go ahead and cut DTK and Origins and start talking about what the format might be. Now it's hard obviously to do that without knowledge of what's in Kaladesh, but I do often cut the sets that are rotating for the last couple of weeks um, that a format's going to be around. So I'm going to do that starting today. Now, Red Green Wolves players, don't freak out. What I'm going to do in the next week or so here, before I really start brewing up post-rotation decks, is I'm going to start analyzing, you know, I may do a series of videos or one big video. I'm going to start analyzing what decks um, do, are going to be around after the format, maybe? What decks' um, sort of health levels are like through the rotation? Will they survive? Will they not? What pieces do they lose? Are they just done? Are they DOA on rotation? Or will they maybe get better with rotation? I'm thinking about doing a series of videos, um, maybe on specific decks that I think maybe get better or worse, is what I'm trying to say here. Um, post rotation. So let me know what all you want to see, and Wolves is definitely on that list. Again, don't fret, Wolves players. I got your back and I see your comments. So, keeping that in mind, what all do you want to see? What sort of analysis do you want on this rotation? Specific decks, maybe specific colors, you know? You have my ear at this point. I really am interested in how you want to see this rotation be covered. Um, so, with that in mind, go forth to the comment section. Let me know what you want to see, what you want to do about rotation. And I will see you guys later. If you enjoyed the content, like the content. That's just super no-brainer. You should just do that. And then, um, even if you didn't like it, you should do that. And then sub if you're new, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching, my wizards.